Hello everyone, this is Gary D. Tonnencourt from morethanasnapshot.com. Today I want to show you how to use the new, newly released Topaz 6 noise removal program. And it seems to be really good. So I'm going to check it out on this image. I know this image has a lot of problems. Number one, it was getting dark when I shot it and I had to use a high ISO, probably around ISO 1000. And you can see there's a lot of noise, especially in the back here. Um, and some noise around here. It's... Uh, also, it was kind of far away, so this image is, is cropped already. So, you know, I liked it, and so I was doing everything I could to try to save it. And so here's taking it one step further, trying to see if this noise removal will help an image that's suffering from some quality if, issues. Um, so we'll go to Filter, over to Topaz, and then Denoise 6. And that should send the file over to Topaz. And you can see the way the program is laid out. We have our preview in the middle. And you should find an area of your image where you have both highlights, midtones, and shadows, if you can do that. It zooms you into 200%, which is fine. Uh, to me, that seems a bit much. Um, I'm going to go to 100%. I, I feel um, that that's a good zoom level. Um, over on the left side, it does give you some information about the image. Um, oh no, this is information about the presets, sorry. So there are presets that you can make yourself or that you get from them on uh, different cameras. And so for Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Panasonic, Sony. So this was shot with a Canon. And I do believe it was around uh, ISO 1000. So I'm going to look for a 5D Mark III around ISO 1000. And they are still adding presets to this as this is just coming out so if you don't see your camera here yet it will be here soon plus you can make your own presets and I'll show you how to do that too so the closest one I see right now is um, 5d mark 3 ISO 800 so I'll click on that and just to kind of see if it does a good job all on its own and you can see that I think it really did uh, get rid of noise in the background let me go to I'll go back to 200 so we can see that in more detail. So if I click on it, you see this is the uh, original level of noise. And if I let go, that's the adjusted level. Of course, anytime you do noise reduction, it tends to smooth out some details. And this is why this program is pretty good, because it gives you a lot of options for bringing back that detail. All right, so the processed version here, we can see it introduced some banding. So I'll show you how you can get rid of that. Um, so I don't think this preset worked that well for this image because it added the banding. So let's go into the settings, which are over here on the right, and I'll show you how you can clean that up. So you have the noise reduction sliders for one. And if we try to go in order of the sliders, we have different preview modes that will help us see what's going on with each slider. So if we start with Luma, which just looks at the contrast noise, um, that's going to uh, be a good time to look at the first three sliders, the overall strength, the adjusting of the shadows, and the adjusting of the highlights. So, uh, but before I do that, because this preset seems to have added banding. I'm going to come down to the banding and I'm going to uncheck horizontal. And you'll see this this line all of a sudden will disappear. It didn't need to be debanded on this image. And so by actually having it deband, it actually added in a band. So we don't want to do that. So we'll put that away. All right. So on the overall strength, you can see that if I increase the strength, it gets rid of the shadows, but it really smooths out the image quite a bit. See, that's before and that's after. So we have to find a spot where it's getting rid of some noise, but not overly smoothing the image. So try a few different places until it looks good. All right, here I see some detail still and a bit less noise. So maybe I'll just put it a little bit higher. All right. Then we can adjust the shadows, the darker parts of the image. Um, so increase the strength of that one a little bit. All right. 
And then we have uh, the highlights. There's not usually much noise in the highlights, so I'll take this one down a little instead of increasing it. All right. Now, the next slider is adjusting red. So if I come over to the red preview mode, I can see this here. Now, also, besides uh, just looking at the regular image, you can have the program brighten up the image so you can see more in more detail how much noise there is. So we have normal, we have off, normal, and strong. So when you're not seeing the noise very well, you can crank up this uh, brightening mode and it helps to visualize where the noise is. So in this case for our red noise, let's see if we take it all the way down how it would look. And compare that if we take it all the way up. All right, so I'm going to take this one down a little bit. Then the next slider is blue. We'll do a similar thing here. I think that's too high. All right, on blue. And then next we have clean color. So clean color uh, goes along with this color tab. And let's see if we increase that one a bit just to smooth out this noise here we'll take it down I don't want to go too smooth so I'm going to go about there all right and then the next one the black level we can go to RGB for this so what can happen is when you renew, remove noise from the black areas of the picture, it can actually introduce some color casts into this part of the picture. So by increasing the black level, it helps to bring your blacks back to a uh, more true black color. So I'm going to increase that one just a little bit. And it, it's getting rid of a little bit of a blue tone in here, bringing it more to black. All right, we don't want to go too far. Back off a little bit on that. All right, so that's before, before, and after. Now you can see we lost some detail by doing that. So there are some sliders for this under detail recovery. And so I'm going to crank up the detail recovery. try to bring as much of that detail back as I can and then we'll use this reduced blur slider if it introduced any blur during that process they don't want to go too far with that one just takes a little practice you know going up and down and finding the right spot till it looks good now after doing all of that detail recovery and everything it sometimes helps to add a little grain, a fine grain, uh, makes the detail look a little bit more natural. So it'll add a little bit of fine grain to it, maybe not quite that much. And after you do all of these sliders, hopefully your image is looking better. So let's take a look at it when we fit it to the screen. So that's the original. And this is the processed version. I feel like I'm losing uh, a bit too much detail around the eyes. So I'm going to take the black level correction down and see if that helps. Because that's a dark part of the picture. No, that one's not the one doing it. I'm going to take the shadow one down a little bit then. All right. Then when I get it back into Photoshop, I will probably uh, mask out this part. 
uh, so we can have more detail in the fur and the eye and stuff like that. Now, if this preset worked well for what you wanted to do, all you have to do is click this little cog and click Save. Now you can create a preset. Let's say you had a whole bunch of images under these same lighting conditions, under the same ISO. So um, I already created one called Otter, so I'll call this one Otter 2. Whether you choose relative or absolute, if every one of your images that you plan on using this preset is uh, going to be the exact same camera, the exact same ISO and aperture and all that stuff, you would choose absolute. But if things may uh, be a little bit different, different ISO or different aperture, you would want to choose relative and it will estimate. So I'll leave it on relative and I'll fill in the rest of the preset form. So it was made on a Canon. Uh, 5D Mark III, and ISO I believe was 1000. It was a raw file, and if you want, you can put a description. So when I save that, it should add that to my list of presets. Here we have the first one I made, Otter, and here's Otter, Otter 2. So next time you could just come in and click on that <coughs> if that works for the for the image that you're using. So now I want to send this back to Photoshop, so I'll say OK. It's processing it and sending it back. And um, so this top layer should be the one that was just processed. If I take that off, we see the bottom layer. All right, so that's the before and after. There's a slight bit more detail in the fish and the otter in the in the lower level. So what I'll do is I'll put a layer mask on here so that we can see through to the bottom layer. And I'll get a paintbrush to paint with black. And I'll just paint in over the eye and fur. Just so we have, that's not really a high noise area, but it's an, an area where we really want to have as much detail as possible. So that's why I'm using the mask to bring back the original layer just in that section. So it's doing the noise removal pretty much everywhere except for here. That just gives us a little bit better detail in this area. All right, and there we have it. If I close this now, it'll send it back to Lightroom. Um, and it's all done. So give Topaz Noise 6 a try. It does really do a good job of re removing noise. It gives you a lot of control over different ways that you can uh, get rid of the noise. And I think it's a tool worth trying.